everyone, welcome to Coffee with Kelly 101. It's exciting to be in our backyard again. The hints of spring are coming. It's almost spring and we're excited. And uh, the quality of what you're hearing probably isn't as well when it's done at the church in the building, but um, I just wanted to be outside today. And so welcome with me. Our topic this morning is uh, called tripping. But I did want to do a shout out. Today is my oldest grandson's birthday. They're both the twins are turning seven today. It's February 20th, the day that we're filming. And so happy birthday, Harper and Owen. And also on the same day, so many of you guys know our dear friend, Jaina, um, who went to be with the Lord on February 20th, six years ago. And this day is always uh, special to us, a time to remember her friendship. She was like family to us. And so uh, I can't just go through the day without uh, commenting that and um, looking forward to meeting her again in heaven. So anyways, our topic this morning is falling. And why don't we open up with prayer? Father, we come before you this afternoon. Lord, I thank you for uh, my grandsons, the first one turning seven. I can't believe it's been seven years since they were born. I thank you for the life of Jaina. I thank you she gets to be with you now, but I thank you for her friendship, for her relationship with our family, uh, for the memories they have, and just for the opportunity to have her in our lives. I thank you for that. Pray for her daughters and the rest of her family and friends. Um, as they remember her today. And so I pray too that you would speak to our hearts, Father, as we talk about falling as believers and what that means. In Jesus' name, amen. So something exciting happened this week. Our youngest grandson, his name is Julian, and he's about 13, almost 14 months. And he walked yesterday. He walked and it was so exciting. And if you are a mom or a grandma, if you remember back how exciting that day was, I remember when my kids took their first steps, specifically my son too. He didn't walk till he was 15 months. I remember thinking, oh my gosh, he's never going to walk. And we were having a bunch of uh, family over and all of a sudden he just stood up and started walking. I still remember that day like it was yesterday. So it was a very exciting day for my daughter and her husband. And so it was really, really exciting. Now I thought a lot about walking this week because of that, you know, and, and learning to walk involves a lot of falls, a lot of bruises, a lot of tears. And in my devotions this morning, I was in Psalm 37. And in verse 34, it says, put your hope in the Lord, travel steadily along his path. And I just kept thinking of that phrase, travel steadily along his path. And when I read that, I kind of chuckled inside because yesterday morning I was out walking with a friend. Uh, her name is Shannon, walking, not running. And we were walking <clears throat> excuse me, down Margarita Road, and I saw some yellow caution tape, said caution, wasn't really high or anything, but it was there. And I uh, literally remember thinking, pick your feet up, Kelly, don't trip on that, because as you know, I trip a lot and I fall. And guess what I did? I tripped. I don't know how I didn't pick my right foot up. I, um, I hit it. And I went to fall and I didn't want to face plant, I think. So I threw my shoulder down again and I popped up really fast. And my friend's looking at me and I jump up. I'm like, oh my gosh, I fell and I saw what coming. And she's like, whoa, that's really graceful. And I've had some graceful falls, some not so graceful. I guess this was one of my more graceful fall. But so I just kept thinking about walking. And then I kept thinking about that verse about walking steadily along his path. And our desire really in our faith is to walk steadily on the path of faith. But oftentimes that path um, includes falling, bruises, and tumbles, and trips. There are rocks and uh, limbs and things to trip on. The enemy throws things in our path. Our own flesh can tempt us often to turn down another path. And there are a lot of temptations along the way down our path of faith. And sometimes, like in my case, we even see the thing and we think, you know, don't fall on that. Don't trip on that. And we think we got this. We can handle it. And we get too close and we fall excuse me, fall. Perhaps we're too sure of ourselves. We think I can handle that and down we go. But falling, 
<laughs> and getting up is really part of growing, isn't it? I know with our kids, when they start to walk, it's hard. You know, you don't, you don't want them to fall because they're going to cry. You kind of think, oh, maybe they're not going to want to try again. And, you know, you put like the little buffer things on the corners of the table so they don't get hurt. And you just don't want them to fall. You don't want them to fall down and go boom and to hurt. And, you know, we don't like to fall. It hurts. But falling and getting up strengthens them when they're learning to walk, doesn't it? And it strengthens us. Yes, no one wants to trip and fall, but we all know as humans, we will. We are going to trip. And sometimes we fall gracefully and it's easy to get back up on our path. And sometimes we fall hard. And the temptation sometimes to stay down is very great. We break something. I've done it. We get stitches. I've done it. We think we'll never want to rock or run again. It's too painful, too hard. The scars and bruises are too bad. And sometimes we want to give up. I think my hardest fall physically, I was pregnant with my son and he's 36, so a long time ago. And I was really big and I was out running. I told you, I, I've always been a faller. And I tripped on something, long story. I tripped on something and I fell down. I broke my finger. I was all scraped up. Uh, that was the day that my son chose to sleep a long time. I thought I killed my baby. It was awful. So I still would say that was my worst fall. Um, spiritually, <coughs> I think when I think of falling, I think more of a, a regret. I think of something. and um, But I also think of the lessons that I learned from it. But anyways, you know, Proverbs uh, 24, 16 tells us a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again. And it goes on. So I, I think the Lord knows we're going to fall. He made us. We're human. But it's standing back up, brushing yourself off and jumping in the grace uh, in the race again, getting on that path and traveling steadily. Keep going. I We've just been all watching the Olympics for the last two weeks and I was thinking about uh, Michaela Schifrin, the, the downhill skier, and she had, uh, it just reminded me of Simone, you know, in the Olympics, the gymnast who, so much attention on them, so many commercials about them. And, and so Michaela, there's six races and her last chance for a medal and so much pressure. And she DNR'd or did not finish almost every single one and she did not medal. And there were so many haters online, which I'm thinking, how, how do you hate someone who actually made the Olympics? But, and so she was encouraging. Uh, and then uh, her response to those haters drew another response, but really her response was trying to encourage the rest of the athletes who maybe weren't doing as well as they wanted to do. Keep going, keep going. You know what? Don't hate the haters. Just ignore them and do your best. Stand up and keep on going. And that's what she did. And that is so admirable. Um, you know, when I fell yesterday or when it, when it was because I fell so gracefully, I thought, no big deal. This one isn't going to hurt. No scratches, no bruises. Last time I fell, I broke my wrist. Didn't do that. No open cuts. And I thought, oh, that one was a piece of cake. But yesterday I woke up and my left arm was so sore. So the muscles or the tissue or whatever that I, that I rolled on, you know, as you get older, you don't fall and recover as well. And so even though you couldn't see the bruises, they were there. And sometimes our trips on our path spiritually leave scars and bruises behind as well. But those can also help us grow stronger in the long run. And we need to remember that. They remind us to pick up our feet. Um, they remind us what can happen if we don't. They remind us not to get distracted and to keep our eyes on the path, you know, on Jesus, to dress appropriately, um, to be careful as we walk. Those are great lessons that we need to be reminded of. And uh, spiritually, again, the same lessons apply. The spiritual lessons we learn after we mess up, um, you know, are, are amazing. They will grow our faith and strengthen our faith if we let them, if we choose to focus on the lesson that God has trying to teach us. We learn what can happen when we allow ourselves to be distracted. When we get distracted by things in the world or by our problems or by the challenges we face or, you know, all the different stuff, it's easy to trip and fall. Um, 
we learn how easy it is to be derailed in our faith. So we um, need to walk carefully or, as Paul said, circumspectly um, or wisely. We learn to watch the road and the path more carefully. That's what that means. Uh, looking out for the temptations that are around every corner because the enemy um, is relentless in trying to get us to stumble. We learn not to get so proud and sure of ourselves and forget to depend on Christ. We got this, just like I saw that caution tape. Not a problem. Just pick your feet up, Kelly. Bam, there I go. And spiritually the same, something that maybe isn't so hard. We think we got this. We don't have to trust the Lord. You know, so actually falling can be healthy. Uh, you know, the most painful thing that happens in your life can be the really the, healthy, the healthiest thing in your faith. So many injuries over the years have helped me try to learn how to listen to my body better. I am still not great at it, but I am way better now than I was when I was younger because experience tells me if I don't listen, I will crash and burn. Heartaches that we have can teach us to be compassionate and have empathy uh, for people. Uh, overcoming abuse and trauma often can help us become stronger. Challenges that we face help us learn how to minister to other people by the experiences that we went through. I'm not saying those things are good, abuse and challenges and, and tripping. Those things aren't good, but the Lord can bring beauty from ashes. If we can see things like Joseph in uh, Genesis 50, when he says, you know what, man meant for evil, God meant for good. And um, I like what James says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. How do we learn patience? By being tested. So these hard things teach us lessons that we need to grasp onto. They teach us lessons about God and who he is. They teach us lessons about who we are, maybe our weaknesses as well as our strengths. They teach us how to manage and guide and navigate our life better. They, they drive us to the word of God where we should be going to get our wisdom and knowledge and direction anyways. And they drive us into the arms of Christ as we realize, you know, we don't have the strength, we don't have the power, and we don't have the wisdom to do these things. You know, losing, uh, I read once, can help us become better winners. And it's true. Losing can help us build humility and grace and perseverance. Not always winning can teach us, you know, to keep trying over and over again and not to give up. And it's uh, what we allow God to do in our hearts through our pain and our loss and our suffering. And sometimes, yes, it might leave a scar. I got a lot of scars. I have 10 scars which can also remind us of his faithfulness. It can remind us of a place that we don't want to go again. It can remind us of a healing God did in our life. It can remind us of who God is. You know, um, it, they can be bittersweet. Julian, my grandson, his bruises from falling down as he learns to walk will help him learn to steady himself better. That's what happens. My silly trip the other day will remind me not to be so lazy and to pick up my feet when I'm walking. Being lazy is not a good place to be. And I kept thinking spiritually lazy is really a dangerous spot. And I pray that you're not there today because the enemy can come in. And you're not even noticing you're distracted if you're spiritually lazy. So guys, trust in the Lord and walk steadily in his path, as the psalmist says. And the word steadily means in a regular and even manner. And I really like that too, regular even. Let those words characterize our walk of faith, not a roller coaster. Today I trust you, tomorrow I don't, you know, or uh, it depends what's happening in my life if I'm going to trust you. He desires us to be regular and even, steadfast, not allowing our motions to guide us, not allowing our circumstances to guide us, not allowing um, our experiences you know, uh, to guide us and be driven by that as well, but by his word and by his Holy Spirit. So ladies, pick up your feet, watch out for that caution tape. And if you have fallen down, the righteous man will get up. 
get up, start again, jump back in the race and keep going. And as you're walking, ask the Lord what lesson he has to you, you know, to learn from your fall and um, just keep going and never give up. If you're sidelined right now, get back in the race, get back in the run, get back in whatever, get back on the path and walk steadily in him. God bless you guys. Have a great day. And I pray that your walk of faith would be even and regular. Father, we come before you uh, right now and I thank you for your word. I thank you just for that psalm and just little nuggets and phrases that remind us, Father, of um, how you want our faith and how uh, we can hope in you and trust in you and how walking steadily in your uh, on your path will make us strong. And so, Father, I pray that for each one of us, that we will be regular and even, that we won't allow our emotions to guide us, that we won't allow our circumstances, our experience to dictate the choices we make, but that we would seek you and your word uh, through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys.